Hi, this is Anand from Geekstick. This is to explain pipeline in Jenkins. We are going to see both declarative and scripted pipeline. Hi, today we are going to see uh, Jenkins pipeline. So this is just an expression of progress in the process. Uh, ever since software is uh, working more of a process industry, um, so when you are following this process, any unintended human errors will be completely eliminated. For example, when you are doing any work, you know, we'll follow some steps, we'll follow some guidelines. You know, uh, this this pipeline will enforce those guidelines. Uh, in pipeline, there are two kinds of uh, you know process we are following. One is a declarative pipeline, another is scripted pipeline. The key difference between the scripted and declarative is uh, just it's a question of syntax and its flexibility. Obviously, declarative pipeline is relatively a new feature. Anything uh, comes the later or the next entrance, next entrant in the feature, you know, it will have some significance compared to the uh, the previous version. So, uh, declarative declarative pipeline is more of you know more flexible, and we can start from the point where we can. But in case of scripted pipeline, it is more of, you know, uh, more code based and uh, in declarative, we can keep that code in the um, Git or in the version control from there, we can pull it and we can replicate. So other than that, you know, in declarative pipeline is more of, you know, it's a block labeled with a pipeline, whereas scripted is start with a node and we can obviously in both uh, we can follow uh, it's agent based okay we can agent we can choose any agent to work on it and um, yeah we will see both examples in uh, declarative it will be like this pipeline agent stages stage steps that's it then inside the steps we will follow uh, we can put multiple steps inside the stage the whole stages will be in the stages stages will be uh, inscribed within the pipeline but in case of a uh, scripted pipeline, it will be like a node stage. So in both places, we can run in parallel also. Uh, now we will go uh, into some examples and see you know, practically how we are going to write both the uh, scripted and also the declarative. First, let's start with the declarative. Um, actually, we are supposed to start with the scripted, but even then, you know, I would like to start with the declarative, then we'll go to that base version. Now, you know, I'm leaving it to you, you know, how we are going to choose and what are you going to use. Uh, if you want, you can use the blue version of the pipeline also, but we'll go the very basic one. Yeah, let's go into some examples now. Here, I'm going to give an example declarative pipeline. Let's choose this pipeline and say, okay, it started. Already I had written some code, so I am going to add this code from here for the declarative pipeline. See here, in declarative pipeline it starts with a pipe agent. You can specify agent, you know, our agent is nothing but uh, we will call it as a node. We will have some uh, primary node and some secondary node, you know, during quite period, you can choose, uh, make it run from the different nodes, like a child processor. But here we will stick to, um, we can use, uh, here we are using only one node, you know, because it is a practice uh, machine, right? So I kept agent as any, anyhow by default, it will go to the same primary node. Inside the stages, I'll have multiple stage. Inside the stage, I can have multiple steps. It's written like this building one testing deploying let's see how it runs save now let me build this that's running Sorry, I didn't show you the actual run, so I will run it again. First time it is taking some time to set up everything. Okay. 
see how it's progressing we can see build start and deploy you know here everything is an echo so it's not a big issue see testing deploying finish success good now if you want to replace something i can rerun again from here just run in every uh, stage it will show the time taken by the process this time it's taking more time you see for example last time it was 554 millisecond now it's 2 seconds 2 seconds is relatively big just for an echo i don't know every stage it is taking 2 seconds because i am running it from the vagrant now um i'm click on it here i don't want to run from the build just from the test stage i can do so i can restart from the stage these are some benefits of uh, declarative pipeline now i'm starting from test so the stage name all naturally it's coming from that uh, drop down directly i'm running from the test because it skipped build directly i started from the test right so these two stages only running for example in the build stage if it is taken from the git and if i need to rebuild and everything you need not do that right because already it's taken from the git code is in my base unless otherwise there is some web hook which is triggering the git you know uh, updates and commits we need not do, do that right so directly i'm starting from the test now let's go to the scripted pipeline <clears throat> let's go to the dashboard scripted pipeline selecting pipeline click okay if you want to write some description that is well and good pipeline script from scm also you can do if it's already in the uh, source control management you can do in case of uh, scripted pipeline you know all block in the uh, descriptive it was in the pipeline right now here everything is going to be in the node in node you can put um, Uh, stages here there what you do stages stage steps here pipeline stages stage step here node stage inside the stage you need to give uh, like this build in the build as a shell in its more of a coding style there go then i am copy the same block time and again here instead of build i am going to name mark it as test deploy that's it you know very simple right really compared to the declarative but it's having its advanced features benefits are there some significance are there like you know we can start from the place where we can start and also we can pull it from the source repository and um you know it's more structured and it's very easier to write and maintain but it is more of you know coding you know more of you know more verbose so lot lots of text lots of writing needs to be here save let's run this you know build yeah it is done so sweet right now we will add some more changes into that for example i would like to you know give an approval process i can include an approval process how we are going to add an approval process we will see here in the test stage assume someone needs to approve someone needs to approve the code so here i am adding do you approve in test stage unless otherwise there is some approval process it should not move over here in the test itself you know we should not you know the uh, i mean here build i am doing um here instead of building i make it uh testing in testing means in test environment i am going to deploy so let's see how it works you know we will go through the syntax how i how i did build now it won't move further because it needs that uh, condition it's asking do you approve the moment i click on proceed it will move further it failed awesome so what's the problem you know a real fun in seeing that in fact we should have seen what's the error let's 
Okay, the user aborted for class the guru will know such a property. User aborted. Very good. Let's back to the project. Click on configure. Let's we are going to add some minor changes in the code. Uh, in the groovy script, it's basically a groovy script, both scripted and um, you know same syntax, almost same syntax. This groovy script, what we need to add is um, user aborted you know i am setting some variable value problem is here only because based on this value only we are you know building that stage so i need to declare i need to define it here by default it is false here let's quickly we'll go through that syntax also user input input submitter this is my username right vagrant that's what i gave here and message is do you approve that's what it lost then regularly we need to add this you know i'm purposely putting inside the try catch you know the try catch is also not mandatory um if you are so sure you know unless otherwise some unexpected error comes this is to catch i'm using this and cause get it will come to know about in case of uh, not approved it will go over here and properly it will give that message uh, otherwise you know why it is not approved, we may not be knowing. Otherwise, I need to add some more messages. It is not approved. Uh, here, you know, I need to add it is not approved in this uh, echo I need to put after it is aborted. But here, I'm. it is more safer. You know, whenever some, always, at the most try to add inside the try catch. That's what I uh, suggested to my team members. Now, I am. let's try to re end again. Because always you know we need to fix some failures then only we will get the real fun of it otherwise happy path for a presentation purpose it looks good but we may, we may be missing the actual learning so here do you approve yes proceed let's see how it works because we need to make some mistakes then only we will come to know how much we learn okay. so if you are not making any mistake then on the day you are not learning anything so that's the purpose you know let's introduce some bugs let's fix it we'll have a real fun you know in the software see now i'm proceeding so it, it asked me question do you approve i proceed yes let's see some negative case also like an abort what's going to happen do you approve no i abort let's see it should not move forward to deploy very good what's the message it gave in the logs you see script not permitted to use the method so it is aborted here we need to you know approve something then only we'll get a proper message it lots and signature you know this is the first time you know this is a one time job now let me try to abort and see build now again we are going to see the abort case only abort see aborted after the build it did not go to the deploy do you approve aborted by the vagrant you know last time we got some error right but looks like the timeout period did not complete aborting. Very good. The build itself would stop. It didn't go to the deployment. 